The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents... This is your FBI. This is your FBI. The official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service... By the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representatives in your community. Nothing makes us feel more secure than owning our own home free and clear. If you feel that way, you ought to know all about the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan. Pick up your phone and call your local Equitable representative. He's a neighbor of yours. In about 16 minutes, I'd like to tell you more about your local Equitable Society representative and how he can help you enjoy the many benefits of membership in the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Tonight, the subject of our FBI file, Flight to Avoid Prosecution. It's titled, The Frivolous Cousin. Between the ages of 12 and 20, there comes a span of years we call the teens. Many of us remember this period with great nostalgia, for in general, the teens should be a happy time of life. Remember, we use the word should, for many youngsters in their teens, through a lack of guidance, sway from the path of honesty. And as in tonight's case, a case involving two teenage girls, your FBI is often called into action through necessity. This is the story of such a case and how your FBI reluctantly but efficiently brought that case to an end. Tonight's FBI file opens in a southern city of moderate size. In the local park, the Hawkins Bakery Company is holding its annual employees' picnic. And as customary, Mr. Dwight Hawkins is presiding over a talent contest to select Miss Cupcake of the Hawkins Bakery chain. Lucy Jenkins, the final contestant, is finishing a dramatic recitation. Sir Edward, I shall not shed a tear. Hush, speak not, or I may not remain so strong. Go, and with you goes my heart. Thank you. Now may I give credit where credit is due. The wonderful speech I just read was written by my cousin, Margie Jenkins. Ah, thank you, little Lucy Jenkins. And you too, Margie. You know, folks, <clears throat> Margie's a Hawkins girl, too. <laughs> hey, yes, sirree. We've seen a lot of talent up here today. But now we make our choice. Which one of these five young ladies will be Hawkins' Miss Cupcake and have her picture on our special wrapper next month? Hmm? It's up to the judges. <clears throat> Girls, you can take a break, but don't stray far from the stand. We'll have our decision in just a few moments. Lucy! Lucy! I'll be right down, Margie. Oh. Oh. Margie, I thought I'd die when that microphone made that screeching noise at first. Why, honey, nobody even noticed it. Honest? Honest. Oh, but Lucy, honey, you shouldn't have told him that I wrote that speech. You know darn well I copied it out of Honest Love magazine. Oh, so what? Dear Margie, I want you to have a little fame, too. Heaven knows what this can lead to. Sure, your picture on the new wrapper. Oh, not just that. But it's who might see that wrapper that counts. After all, some talent scout might just happen to buy a box of Hawkins cupcakes and he'll discover me right then. I never thought of that. And I'll owe it all to my cousin. Now, Lucy, that's not true. Oh, Margie, suppose I don't win. Betty Jane Smith was very good with her accordion number. Now, Lucy, don't you be silly. If they put Betty Jane's picture on that wrapper, they'd never sell another cupcake all year. Why, that toothy smile of hers... <gasps> Attention, everyone. Will the five contestants please return to the stage? I'll wait right here, Lucy. Keep your fingers crossed. 
Now, uh, while we're waiting for the girls, let me remind you that Mrs. Collins has more lemonade ready for the table over there. <laughs> and there's still plenty of pieces for one and all. Don't be shy now. You make them. You can eat them! <laughs> uh, in a line over there, girls. That's it. <clears throat> As you know, the judges are the three store managers in this area. And their impartial choice for Miss Cupcake is... Miss Betty Jane Smith! <laughs> Step forward, Betty Jane. You're the new Miss Cup. Oh, good heavens. Someone bring some lemonade up here quickly. Little Lucy Jenkins has fainted. Well, here you are, Lucy. Are you sure that you feel all right now? Yes, sir, Mr. Hawkins. I feel fine now. I I'll get out here, too. Well, I can drive you on to your house, Margie. Oh, no, it, it's real close. I'll just walk it after a bit. Well, uh, all right. Oh, uh, Lucy. Yes, sir? Uh, you're on night shift tonight, aren't you? Yes, sir. Margie and I both handled the counter until 11. Well, if you still feel shaky this evening, uh, you can take the night off, hmm? Oh, no, sir. I feel quite well enough. We mustn't let these things get us down. Good girl. <laughs> See you tonight, then. Bye. Lucy? Yes, Margie? Lucy, you're as noble as that girl in the honest love story. You're very sweet, Margie. But what's past is past. Sorrow is something every actress must experience. After all, they... They... <laughs> oh, my dear. Oh, now, honey. Honey. I wanted so to win. But they didn't like me. Now, Lucy, you cut it out. You hear me? You're a fine actress. Someday you'll make those old judges wish they'd made you Miss Cupcake. When you're famous, you can come right back here and laugh right in their faces. When I come back? <laughs> I'm never even going to leave. Oh, now, Lucy, don't you talk like that. Come on, now, you go in the house. I'll see you tonight at the bakery store, and, and I'll think of something. Don't you worry. Just leave it to Margie. One seventy-four. Seventy-five and two dollars. Thank you, and come in again. Did you read it, Lucy? I can't find the article you talked about, Margie. Oh, you're on the wrong page. Here, give me the magazine. You said it was in the television section. Yes, but it's right over... Here. There, look. Barry Johnson's show, a big success. You remember Barry Johnson? He used to be in the movies? Oh, yeah. Well, when I saw this article, I said to myself, he's just the one to give my little Lucy a big start. I told you I'd think of something. Margie, I just don't get it. Oh, that's just because you haven't read the article, silly. Listen. Every weekday, Barry Johnson has an afternoon television program called Actresses Anonymous. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, he selects unknown girls from his audience to come up on the stage and do an unrehearsed scene with him. On television? Coast to coast. And that's a darn sight better than being on a cupcake wrapper. But that old show is in New York. So we'll go to New York, Lucy. You want to go, don't you? Oh, yes. But it takes money, and Papa would never let me go. Let alone give me the money to go there. Well, neither would my mom. But we can't depend on them, Lucy. we got to strike out on our own. Margie. Now, don't you fret, honey. Ten, eleven, twelve. Hmm. Thirteen dollars and some change. That, that's not enough. Well, then put it back, Margie. We'll think of another way. I've already thought of another way, honey. <laughs> Thank you.
The following morning at a nearby FBI field office, Special Agent Ralph Godlio approaches the desk of Supervisor Neil Murphy. Godlio carries a large suitcase. You send for me, Neil? Yes, Ralph. When do you leave for New York? 5.40 tonight. You're giving testimony on that kidnapping case? Yes, the one I worked on up there last year. Well, if you're not leaving till 5.40, you can work on this report that just came in. Yes, sir. We had a call from the local police. Seems the main store of the Hawkins Bakery was robbed and a truck stolen. Oh? Two teenage employees seem to be responsible. Last night, the manager of the chain returned to his office and found a girl, Margie Jenkins, going through his desk, apparently looking for money. There was a gun in the desk, and when Hawkins surprised her, she grabbed the gun. Shoot him? No, but she threatened to. Then she called the other girl, her cousin, Lucy Jenkins. They tied him up and left the back way. We think they stole the bakery truck, the one that's missing. They also took the gun and a few dollars from the cash register. How do we come in, Neil? The truck was reported seen crossing the state line early this morning. That makes it interstate and our business. Well, I got to get some breakfast. You want to study this report? We can talk about it when I come back. Margie, did you look at the points? That's what Papa always does when our car goes on the blink. I wouldn't know what to find even if I did look at them. Oh. Well, stand back. No use keeping the hood up. Oh, Margie, I'm hungry. Well, go on back to the truck and eat some more pastry. No. If I eat another cupcake, I'll positively die. Where do you guess we are? Oh, about ten miles inside the state line. There hasn't been a car come by since we stole. Well, it's early yet. Now, honey... Wipe that sad look off your face. Marge will get you to New York all right. But when? I'll either die of starvation or eat so much pastry I'll be as fat as a pig. Either way, don't help my chances as a little old actor. Oh, and look at that. I'm beginning to get back some of my accent. Oh, that's just because you're so upset, honey. I work so hard to lose Now, now, just relax. Go on, exercise. Well... <clears throat> Roll on, thou deep and dark blue seas. Roll on. Better? Lucy, you sound like you was just born in England. <sighs> oh, hey, here comes a car. Oh, you get out on the road and flag it down. Oh, no, go on, on, go on. I want to get something from the truck. Oh. Hey, hey there. Stop, please. Why, what's wrong, honey? Uh, my papa's bakery truck broke down. We need a lift to the next town so we can call him. We? Yes, that's my... uh, My sister coming over now. We'd be obliged to go just as far as you could take us, mister. Uh, We have to call my mother. She owns the bakery. Your mother? This girl said you had to call your daddy. Oh. Well, well, yes, but you see... what is this? That's an out-of-state truck. Will you please get out? Huh? She won't shoot, honest. If you'll just get out. Lucy, you get some rope from that truck. Say, oh, yeah. are you kids crazy? Hurry up with that rope, Lucy. Did you read the report, Ralph? Yes. Why do you suppose they stole the bakery truck? Well, couldn't even guess. That's the trouble with kids who break the law. You never know for sure why or what they'll do next. Excuse me. Sure. Murphy speaking. Oh, yes, Lou. Uh, hold on a minute. Something on the truck, Ralph. Oh. Uh, Go ahead, Lou. Yes. Where? Yeah, got it. Yes, right. Thanks, Lou. Ralph, our teenagers had motor trouble ten miles across the state line. That'd be near uh, Centerville. Yes, right on the outskirts. They stopped a motorist, tied him up, left him in the truck, and stole his car. You got a description of the car? Yes, an alarm's gone out. Ralph, maybe you'd better start north now and stop off in Centerville and send me back a report. Lucy, uh, up ahead there. It's not a big place, but it has a TV sign out in front. Oh, pull in, Margie. Hurry. 
Mm. Now, don't you jump out before I stop. Well, hurry. It's already a quarter to three, and the Barry Johnson show started at 2.30. Okay, now you can go. I just have to see the show so I can be familiar with it by tomorrow. Now, don't you fret. We'll at least see the end of the show. The place isn't closed, is it? No. No, come on. Come on. Nobody here. Oh, th th there's the bartender. And a TV set right over the bar. Mister? What can I do for you, ladies? Well, would you... Would you turn your set on? Uh, we'd like to watch a television show. Sorry, the picture tube's burned out. Oh, no. Won't it work long enough for us to see about ten minutes of the Barry Johnson show? Wouldn't even work long enough for you to see the commercial. Uh, Mr... Do you have a phone? Yeah, pay phone right by the bar here. Uh, how much would it cost to call New York? Dollar and a half, maybe. Oh. Uh, honey, mm -hmm. I I'm going to call the broadcasting company in New York and make sure they save us tickets for tomorrow's broadcast. Oh. We can take a train from the next town and be there in plenty of time. A train? But we don't have that much money left. We hardly have enough to call New York. Oh, you just wait now. Uh, mister? Huh? This girl's an actress, a, a real good one. Would you like to lend her some money so she could have a break? Honey, if I loan money, the only thing to break would be me. Oh. Well, I, I'll have to ask you again. Marge, now can we have that hey. money, please? What's with that gun? I thought it might help you change your mind. We'd like your money, please. And two hamburgers, well done. <laughs> We will return in just a moment to tonight's exciting case from the official files of your FBI. They say your home is your castle, but it may be a castle in the air if you don't own it free and clear. Would your wife be able to keep up the payments? Well, let's listen to the experience of Mr. Ward Wellman, a member of the Equitable Life Assurance Society. You also wanted to protect your wife's interest in your home, did you not, Mr. Wellman? I certainly did. I wanted her to own it free and clear. But I didn't know how to manage that until I heard you talking about a way for people like me on a modest salary to do it. Well, that must be the Equitable Assured Home Ownership Plan. That's it. So I telephoned our local Equitable man, as you suggested. He showed me how the Assured Home Ownership Plan, by combining life insurance with a first mortgage, would do three things. First, he showed me how my wife was assured of immediate ownership, free and clear, without further payments, if something happened to me. Second, how I'd be building up a constantly growing cash loan fund. Third, how I could use this cash fund to pay off the mortgages years ahead of time. I also liked the fact it was all covered with a single payment once a month. I'd certainly advise anybody buying a house to call up his local equitable man. If he's anything like my equitable friend, he's a mighty good man to do business with. You'll find that equitable men everywhere are good men to do business with. Your local equitable man is selected for character, intelligence, and understanding. You'll find him friendly, helpful, and he really knows the life insurance business. He'll see to it that you get the most for your life insurance dollar. So, no matter what your insurance problem may be, ownership of your home, independence in your 60s, education for your children, or future financial security for your family, ask the man who knows best how to help you. Consult your local telephone directory for the name of your local equitable representative. His name is listed in the yellow pages under equitable. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. <laughs> And now back to tonight's FBI file, The Frivolous Cousin. The problem of a teenager turning to criminal activities is indeed a serious one. The seasoned lawbreaker will not take many unnecessary chances, weighing the fact that he might be caught against the value of taking the chance. But the teenager, filled with the exuberance of youth and a lack of experience will rush into situations and, in general, is a more dangerous criminal because of his impulsive youth. We must remember that our children have unbounding energy and a restless yearning to expend that energy. If, through a lack of proper understanding or counsel, these children direct their energy toward unlawful activities, 
Then, as is evident in tonight's case, the situation is extremely dangerous. Tonight's FBI file continues later that evening. Special Agent Ralph Godlio has arrived at the tavern and is questioning the bartender. So help me, Mr. Godlio, I've never seen anything like it. One holds a gun on me while I make him hamburgers. The other empties my till and makes the phone call. Just as calm as could be. Well, the descriptions you gave fit the girls we're looking for, all right. You say they spoke of taking a train to New York? Yeah, guess they might even be there by now. They called and got tickets for that Barry Johnson show. The little one figures to be an actress. You're sure they got tickets for the Barry Johnson show? Well, I heard him call, didn't I? I'm not doubting you, sir. I just want to get all the facts correct. Well, you got them, mister. $30.60. That's what they took me for. And two hamburgers. You think you'll get these kids? I think so. Our best bet will be to get them when they pick up the tickets. Well, just so you get them. Business is bad enough without schoolgirls coming in here and cleaning me out. I tell you, they just stood there, calm as could be. And one even made me take her hamburger back and put pickles on it. Ralph Godlio? That's right. You're Bill James. I didn't think you'd remember me. Did your office brief you on this one? Yeah, I've been here in the lobby since noon. Good view of the ticket booth from this position. The girls haven't come to pick up their tickets, huh? No, I haven't spotted them so far. There's just one trouble, Bill. One of the ushers just told me this Barry Johnson show is packed with teenage fans. When they open those doors out there, there's a mad scramble for the ticket booth. Usher says it's a real stampede. Maybe we should move in closer to the ticket booth, then. Uh -huh. They've opened the doors. That usher was right. Come on, Bill. Yeah. Let us through, please. Sir, Ralph will yes. never get close enough to that booth. Well, let's try and spot him in his car. Yeah. Ralph, there's just too many girls. This should be Johnson's dressing room. Yes. Yes. Mr. Johnson, I'm Special Agent Godley O, and this is Special Agent James. We're from the FBI. Here are our credentials. Oh, uh, gentlemen, I, I'm afraid I don't understand. May we come in, please? Why, yes, but I, I'm due on stage in a few moments. We won't take long, sir. Well, uh, won't you uh, sit down? Uh, no, thank you. Uh, Mr. Johnson, two young ladies we're anxious to apprehend are seated in your audience. We were unable to catch them at the ticket booth, but their tickets were picked up. I see. We've tried to spot them in the audience, but there are just too many women. They might be wearing bandanas, but uh, at any rate, it's impossible for us to recognize them unless we walk up and down the aisles. We're afraid that might arouse suspicion. Now, if you'd give us your cooperation, I think there might be a safer way. Well, I'll do anything I can, certainly. When I was in pictures, I played several parts where I was an FBI man... Very interesting pictures, incidentally. Yes, sir, I remember those pictures quite well. Now, we know one of the girls has aspirations to be an actress. Your show uses amateur talent, doesn't it? Uh, yes, I do three scenes with young ladies chosen from the audience. Good. We'd like you to do this. Oh, Mr. Godlier, you and James can wait right we here in the wing. Fine. We'll have a good view of anyone who comes up on the stage. We want Barry. Oh, we yeah, want I, Barry. I'd better get out there. We Thank you, Mr. Johnson. We want Barry. Hello, hello, all you wonderful young ladies. Hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> Oh, that's a real welcome. But now, we're in a rush, and we have to get right down to picking our... Would be actresses. Is everybody ready? Yeah! Fine, fine. Now, the first part we have to cast is that of a southern girl. Now, any of you young ladies who want to act and can speak with a real accent, you just come on up here. Meanwhile, here's Slammin' Sookie Smith and his band to get you in the mood for the show. <laughs> Part of them yet, Mr. Gambio? No, sir. But I, I could have all of them come over here this way more. We can uh, see well enough from here. I count ten girls on the stage now. That seems to be all that's coming up. Well, I'd better get back out there. Uh, you signal me if you want me. 
Well, Ralph? I can't figure it. Lucy Jenkins came here to be an actress. We're fairly certain she's in that crowd. Why isn't she... What is it? Stay here. I'm going to talk to Johnson. I just had an idea. Now, we cast the next part. Oh, young ladies, this is a very difficult one. The part calls for great dramatic ability. It's an English part and demands someone who speaks with almost perfect diction. Now, all of you who fit the part, come on up here and go backstage where our producer will interview you. Suki, a little more music, if you please. Ralph, look at all of them getting up. Yes. You uh, spot the Jenkins girl yet? No. This one definitely isn't her. Wait, look at those two. Description fits. Here they come. Uh, pardon me, miss. Yes, sir. We're looking for the producer. This is my manager. How do you do? Lucy and Margie Jenkins. Oh, uh, that's right, but, but how We're special you... agents of the FBI. What? Here are our credentials. Here's a warrant for your arrest. Arrest? Oh, but mister, I just came up here to get a part. I want a career. For the past two days, you've had one. And now it's ended. Come along, please. May and Lucy were convicted in federal court for the interstate transportation of a stolen motor vehicle. May was sentenced to three years in a federal reformatory for women, and Lucy received a two-year suspended sentence and was turned over to local juvenile authorities. In tonight's case, the trail left by the young criminals was not difficult to follow because the girls made little effort to cover up their crimes. But the speed and efficiency which the FBI employed in following that trail was the important factor. For these girls, without conscience, did bodily harm to persons who stood in their way and doubtless would have harmed many more persons had your FBI not ended their criminal careers quickly. For this is one of the purposes of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, to protect you, the American public, within the limits of its jurisdiction against harm from malicious assault, no matter what the age of the assaulter. One of the most wonderful feelings in the world comes when you finally own your own home free and clear. Now, if you'd like to bring that great day years closer, then call your local Equitable Society representative. He'll be glad to tell you about the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan. Or perhaps you have other life insurance problems. Talk them over with your Equitable man. Consult your local telephone directory for his name. You'll find it listed in the yellow pages under Equitable, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Its subject, kidnapping. Its title, Wide Open City. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Freddie Steiner. The author was Dick Carr. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Ralph Gardlio was played by Carlton Young. Others in the cast were Irene Anders, Joe Forte, Tony Hughes, Catherine Keith, James McCallion, Victor Rodman, Chester Stratton, and Les Tremaine. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community, and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Wide Open City on This Is Your FBI. Stay tuned for the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. There's fun for the whole family when Ozzie and Harriet come your way next. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.